Good day, everyone. Our goal today is simple. What we want to achieve today is to see how we can create Google Forms to collect data from our respondents. The first thing you do, you log in into your Gmail account. I have logged into my Gmail account as it is. So all you have to do is you come over here and click this. This drop down menu will give you a number of applications related to Google. Then you look out for forms. Yeah, scroll up and down. You can then look out for forms. You click here. It will land you on this page. So when it lands you on this page, you will see this contact information, RSV, party invite, and a number of that. So these are templates. They are galleries that are already available within this text. So but for me, what I normally do is I click on blank page to start afresh. But you can also click on any of these and then edit them appropriately. But let's go click on blank page. I have my blank page, I can customize it to my page. So I have my blank page here, top left here. You can give it the file name that you want. So let's say bulletin, bulletin. And then here is a title of what we intend to do. This will automatically give you the same name here as the file name. But for me, I just want to make it like say university bulletin, for example. And then here is the description of what you intend to do. You need to introduce the, the purpose of uh, the data collection to your audience or to your respondents. So let's say this is a simple form to collect it that about your research within the university and any other academic information you need to share with us. So you have that, and then you can put your name at the uh, at the Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Awole. Uh, if you like, you can put every, every other. You can even put your phone number so that at least uh, people can contact you in case they have any challenge in completing the form. So that's that. Now let's go to the first question. The first question is that if you look at this section here first, there are three sections. We have the questions, we have the responses, we have the settings. So we're going to start with the questions. After we have completed uh, typing all our questions, designing all our questions, the responses are some of uh, the, you know, the completed forms, the submissions. All the submissions will come in here. And then the settings they have to do with the settings, you want to give the color, the aesthetics of your form, the constraints you want to introduce to the form and things like that. These are some of the things you can do here. So here, we'll go back to questions. Questions straight away. Let's start with our question one. Let's say, for example, now that you want to ask a question about, do you agree that we, we share your data? Do you agree um, that we share your data? All right, that's fine. We want to get your consent to share their data or not. And in this case, we can use, it's going to be dichotomous, yes or no. So you can come in here. You will see a button to this to the right here for each of the questions. You can decide the feature you want to attach to the question. So these are, this is where you're going to see the features here. This is multiple choice. Um, when you click on that, you will see a number of drop downs. The, the, the one on top here is short answer paragraph. Is short answer has to do with you just want to keep a few paragraphs, few lines, and all of that. You click on that property, then you attach to that. But then, in this case as well, uh, you, this is also paragraph. You want to take large chunk of tests, maybe abstracts of a paper, and things like that. You choose paragraph, and then there is another one which is called multiple choice. You want to have a number of options which you can you just want to pick one from, and then the checkbox. You just want um, maybe. We have multiple response where two or three or more of those options will be relevant. And we also have drop down menu where you just have a single drop down menu and then you have all, all the other sub menus attached. I mean, some, yeah, sub menus, all of the options that are listed when you drop down the menu. And then the file upload will permit you to upload uh, a given file. Maybe you want to take the manuscript from a conference registration. So let's go. So now here I've asked the question Do you agree we share your data? This is the customer's question. Uh, we don't want to choose them. Um, yeah, we can just use multiple choice. Here, you can then say yes. And then you can add another one by clicking here. And click on the option and say, no, okay, it's already there. We want to ensure that they complete this particular aspect of the form. If this particular aspect, this particular question is not answered, you cannot submit to bring you back and be blinking red to you, oh, wait a minute, this is compulsory. We have to complete this aspect. Over there, and then scroll down, you will see required. You have to check this button. Require button, you have to enable it. Once you enable that, that becomes constraint. This is now compulsory. Your respondents must ensure that they complete this question before they go. Now, next question. So go to the next question. This is what you have to do. You have your question there, and the next one is um, yeah, your plus here. You can see this button. Click on that plus button and then click the next question. If your next question is uh, uh, you want them to please uh, supply or type your official 
were paid. So uh, supply or type your let's say supply. Okay, that's fine. So that is straight away by default, it's going to be short answer. Because it's just, well, feature web page is just one line, you just put it down. So this, as it is now, you click on short answer, which is already there. Then the next question is, uh, say, you don't want to make it required. Let's just leave it. Let's make it optional so that whether they complete it or not, they can still move on. Now, you go to the next question. You click, you always click here to add question. You have the third question. Your third question could be that you want them to um, put a telephone. Telephone. Telephone number is actually a short answer as well. You click here for the next question. You say you want to um, you want to have information about the department where they're coming from. Uh, department. They can also type that as well. But then if you have, if the departments are not many, you can always make a list of that department which they can click from, which they can choose from. So in this case, let's assume that. Um, we just want to create like four departments or five departments in technology, for example, we can go for a uh, drop down menu where we can choose from. So the first option will be, let's say, computer science. And then the second option here could be um, Kanika engineering. We are signed, this is called the sign of engineering, if you like. And the third option here is um, electrical. And then the fourth option here, let's say it's um, two signs. Um, technology. Let's say the fifth option here is um, right again, electrical. Electrical, okay, I think we have that. It's um, materials, materials, science. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we're done with that. You don't want to constrain them as well. Let's just let them just um, feel free to pick either of that. And then the next question, you had a question here. Here, uh, you just want to get a faculty as well, if you like. Um, faculty, faculty, you may also want to make a drop down a list of those faculties available. But if it is only one faculty that you are completing this form for, you may not have to get any drop down menu. So let's leave it as short answer faculty. And you click again for your next question. Your next question could be the CADA. You want to get the CADA of those completing this questionnaire. So CADA, 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 CADA would have so many options. Uh, we can have options listed. It's multiple choice, multiple choice, multiple choice, multiple choice. Okay, CADA professor. Had another one here by saying reader. Don't bother yourself, your work will automatically be saved because you're working from the cloud. So um, reader, which is the same as associate professor. And then you click another option here to give you the third one, which is the uh, senior lecturer. And then the third option here, you click here again to give you uh, lecturer one. And then the next option here to give you um, assistant lecturer. And the next option here to give you GA graduate assistant. So you're done with that. So if you have other questions as well, you can also do. Let's say you want to. Um, you want to, okay, that's fine. The gender, 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 gender. You want to collect information about the gender, gender. You can just also still maintain this and say, uh, this is male, female. Male, the system will automatically understand that you want to do male and female. Okay, it's already there for you. Let's say you also want to get information about the abstract. You want to get information about, next question here, abstract. 
All right, give me information about your abstracts. Automatically, the system will turn into paragraph for you. But if it does not turn into paragraph for you, you can come in here and look for paragraph because abstracts there, you know, is a set of long texts. So you use that. Uh, do you want to constraint it? Um, do we introduce a constraint uh, by clicking here? You click that if you really want them to put the abstract. Without the abstract, it, they won't be able to submit it. That, that's when you click on this requirement. So we'll check that. If you like, um, and then the other one is manuscript. Let's say you want to collect the manuscript, upload your your manuscript in PDF or documents. You can put that in brackets if you like. Um, so when you do that, you now come here to click on upload. What you want them to do here is to be able to upload that document into this form. Probably picking their PDF documents or Word documents from their computer or from their Google Drive, you're going to see that. So here you go to file upload. And then it's asking you, do you want to save on your Google Drive? Yes, you are. Yes. If you want to allow specific file types, you enable this. And then it can give you the options. So here, I click on documents and PDF, not video, because of availability of space. You don't want to cause bottleneck for other people that may just want to upload document. But then if video is what we have planned for, fine. You click on video and you move on. So um that's the with that. Um the next one is um um yes, we we, we have that, we have that. Let's now take, for example, now that you want to do some settings. You come into settings here. We are done with the design of the form. We would want to begin to set some other things, aesthetics, and um, a few other constraints. Now, you do want to make this a quiz. No, we're not making it a quiz. Let's leave it as it is. For responses, how do you want to manage the collected... Um, manage how responses are collected and protected. Uh, so here, this is the, the section for how responses will be collected and protected. So we want to collect email address of the respondents before they're able to do that. Fine, yes, yes, yes. So that at least if there's any feedback, we can feed them back through their email address. Then you want to send responders a copy of the response so that they'll be sure that they have successfully submitted the form. So you check this on if that is what you want to do. You don't want them to have access to what they have submitted. You leave it as, as it is, as default of state. But then let's say you want to enable that. Oh, cool. say, okay, always. Do it always. It can always be, it can also be when they also request for it alone. That's when you click on that. But then let's leave it as always. Then you want to allow respond then to be able to edit their responses. In that case, you check this so that at least they can come back to their form, re-edit, and resubmit. But let's say we don't want to do that at this, at this point. Let's leave it at that. And then your file upload, you want to constrain the file, file upload not to go beyond a given threshold. Let's see one gig, for example, max, and so and so forth. Uh, and so and so forth. Okay, let's, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Then you, you, you come in here. This is where you put your themes, where you put the colors, where you set the, you know, the, 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 the other color. Let's say we like this color. Unless I like yellow color to my header. You can see it changing here. You can see it changing here, blue color. You can see it changing here. Let's say I want to go for green. I click on green. And um, you can preview the forms you have designed by clicking here. You can see the preview is here. You click the preview here to see what you have done. See, there you go. University bulletin. This is a simple form to collect data about your research and all of that. And then let's begin to see what we have computed. The email that is that is, you know, this is the email we requested for. You can see this red button here, this red star here. It means this particular page is required. If you do not complete this page, you won't be able to submit your form. Do you agree that we share your data? It's also compulsory. Yes or no. You click here and you move on. This other is not what is expected here because other is not an option. You can go back to your question to re-edit it and then remove that. But then let's let's move on. Um, uh, 
supply your official web page. You can supply your web page here, your telephone number here, your faculty here, your your KDA here. Let's say okay, we can be we can begin to fill the forms. Let's say this is um, my email address. I want to say yes. I want you to supply that. Uh, supply your official web page. Uh, HTTP. O A U All right, then that should be the video. Let's say this is my personal web page. So the phone number is there. My department, you can see the drop down menu breaking us all the department. Let's say I'm elect. I click on elect my faculty. Okay, faculty of technology is there. And then straight away, Keda, you, you have that uh, professor. And then your gender, your gender, gender, let's see, I'm, I'm a male. And then my abstract. After you type so many things, you can post all the things we have there. You know, you can take a number of text. And then here, you can click on add file to upload your documents. Maybe you have your documents in your, in your drive, or you have recently worked on some files which you can easily have a look at, uh, which will be handy for you. So you click here on upload. On upload here, we allow you give you access to your computer, your local computer, and then you can easily click on CV, click navigate to see whichever documents you intend to upload. And then you click on that. The system is loading it. Yeah, successfully loaded. You can then click on submit. You can then click on submit. So you can then get this. Open. Yeah, your form is successfully loaded. So you can come back here to see what you have in your form. Okay? So to go back to questions or to see the responses, you can see one response is already created here. And from here, once you click on this response here, you can download it in the spreadsheet here. It can be downloaded in spreadsheet, but you can also see it here in your system within this Google environment to see what has happened and then see so if a brief uh, analytics about the forms already submitted. You can see the, this is the person that submitted the email of the person that submitted the, um, the first form. Uh, do you agree with share? Yes, 100% because only one person has completed the form. Uh, if we have about three, four, five people and then all of the statistics will be shown here. And then the telephone, this is the telephone number here. This is your, your, your department here. The department is yellow here, which is electrical faculty of technology. Keda is a professor, which is shown in blue here. And the gender response is blue also. And then there's an abstract, which you can have a look at. And this is the form that's already submitted. So you can click here to download the form, or you can come in here to see the folder on your Google Drive. And the other one is the last one here, which is uh, if you want to download it in, your, in, a, in, a, in an Excel format, in a spreadsheet, you just, you see that you click here, to say download responses. I'm going to download responses now. And then let me open the document. Uh, okay, see, let's say CSV downloaded. And I'm going to, it is automatically compressed because it might be a large file, uh, which you can expand when you get back to wherever you intend to give it. You may also wish to send it as an email. So and do your analysis with this Excel. You can import this into your R and do any analysis you want to do. You can also import this into SPSS if you must do any analysis as well there. So I hope you have gained from the little things we have just demonstrated. And I'm sure you should be able to do this by yourself. Again, let me quickly recap or briefly. The first thing you have to do is you log in into your email after you have logged in into your email, the first thing you look out for is your forms under here. When you click on that forms, it will land you on a page which is given as this. You can use templates if you like, or you click, click a blank page. When you click a blank page, you can begin to customize your forms. Thank you. This is very good stuff. Cheers.